Hey, what's going on, everyone? Jay Listexic here. Um, hope you're doing good out there. Um, my, my, how time flies, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of juggling, like, many jobs at once, and I'm meant to be doing a PhD right now. Um, so it's been a little bit tricky to kind of get these coming out on the regular, but uh, the good news is that from this day forward, these are going to come out every Thursday. So I'm going to batch them up. Uh, that's what I'm doing now. I'm batching up a few and then they're just going to drop every week. So that's going to be way better. So good news there. And I'm really committed to this, this format. So just to kind of go over what we're doing here, starting from the beginning. So maybe for people who are not used to Max at all or people who are used to Max but not used to Gen, we're, we're incrementally working towards building a, a sequencer. So an algorithmic sequencer and we're building bits each time that are going to go into that that final sequencer so today what we're doing is we're going to take uh something that we picked up from the last one and we're going to put that into place in turning triggers into gates so kind of pretty fundamental stuff if we're if we're in the euro rack world and in, in the modular world triggers and gates are, are kind of the bread and butter of, of sequences right so i'm going to show you a method that links to what we did last time um and then as we go forward i'm going to kind of evolve that method into into something else so there's going to be some extra things that we're going to learn along the way um so let's just jump into it so over here what we've got is we've got this uh this particular gen patcher and it's taking this click in which is a one sample trigger and then it's turning the gap between each trigger that it gets into uh, a held a gate that's held open so we can vary how long that is and you can see here in the live.scope that if we slow that down just a little bit here you can see that it's alternating between these pairs of single sample pulses and holding the the gate up or down or holding it high or low based on that and it's, it's trivial to implement this stuff in, uh, in gen. So I'll show you, let's just steal a couple of things from here, paste it in here. So we've got our gen patcher. We're taking the signal that comes in and we're not doing anything to it. And so in order to see this, uh, the first thing that we should do every time is that we should grab a live.scope object and plug that in so we can see what we're doing. And you'll notice that uh, there's a whole bunch of room down here that we're not using. Um, so we can change the range of this object to handle that. So this is under here, this is the negative range, which we're typically not using when we're dealing with triggers and, and gates and things like that. Um, so we can change that to zero to one, but what I like to do is give myself a little bit of headroom either side so changing that range to negative 0 0.125 and 1.125. And you can see there that we've got a little bit of room on the top of the bottom. It just helps to see what we're doing a little bit. So how do we turn this uh, regular series of metronomic pulses into, uh, into a gate? It's really, really simple to do that we can just use the exact same system that we used last time to count every second pulse by using a counter and a modulo. And that will give us uh, an alternating zero or one that we can use. And if we want to look at the unaffected si signal versus the affected signal, we can just make a new outlet. So I'm just going to duplicate my live.scope because it's got the range setting already baked in. And now you can see that we've got this, uh, this same system from, from over here. And we can vary the length of this gate just by uh, using, varying the, the rate that these metronomic pulses are coming in. And so obviously it would be a little bit silly to leave it here. So what we might do is uh, it might be nice to be able to use this uh, as an envelope. So what I wanted to really show you here is that um, you can do all your control rate and your audio signal generation inside Gen. Um, it's a great way to hear uh, the, the output of this particular gate here is uh, we might make a hi-hat generator 
just using white noise. And this is a really simple and uh, a technique that you probably yourself use in whatever platform you use. But doing it in gen is uh, very trivial to implement. So we can use a noise operator and this, uh, this operator just generates samples between negative one and one at sample rate. So 44,000 times a second or whatever your sample rate might be, it's just a random number generator. So if we want to uh, control the output of this, uh, control the amplitude of this um, in the gen world, similar to MSP, we just multiply that by another number. So if we, we just multiply it by this number here, which is either zero or one, we can gate that audio output. And we've got no gain staging here. I mean, we're just going from zero to one and we could do that in here, but um, without going into too, too much detail there, let's just give ourselves a live dot gain. And this is, um, this is a nice way to do things because we can visually see the meter as well as control the meter. So if I plug this directly into both inlets of live.gain, you can see that we're, we're going to full dBFS zero, full scale. So if we drop that down, we can see it's uh, peaking at negative 50 dB. That's the other benefit of live.gain is that we can, um, we can see it in decibels as well, which is nice. So rather than drag these patch cables over here, I'm just going to make a duplicate of my easy DAC and plug in the left to the left. We should hear it in the left channel and then right to right. So we can hear it in both channels. So we're getting our noise signal in accordance with um, the metronome that we're pumping in. So we can control that. So now that we've got, we're essentially taking a gate signal and we can use that gate for many things. And uh, in future iterations of, of this tutorial series, I'll show you uh, where we might use gates and they'll be in the same places you would expect them in, in modular. But now we're using this as, a, uh, as an envelope. It might be nice to control this uh, in the same way that we might control an envelope. So we might want to be able to control the slope of these um, this attack and decay stage of this envelope. And there's many ways to do this. If you're going to do this in the modular world, you might, you know, you might use a whole different module or you might want to, uh, you might be a little bit clever about it and slew the, those stages of the gate. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. And this is uh, very simple to implement in gen. And there's a number of ways you can do this actually in gen, but by far the simplest is using this slide operator. And this is an, an object that you might've seen in other parts of Max and MSP, and it functions the same here. We have uh, an amount in this case in samples to slide up and then an amount to slide down. So if I put this in between this signal chain here, what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to control those numbers uh, externally out here in the parent patcher. So this is a great opportunity to introduce you to an, uh, an operator in gen that you might not have come across, um, but something you're going to use all the time. And that's the param operator. So what param expects is a name. So we're going to give it uh, a name for our attack phase. And then we're going to provide some attributes here. So we're going to give a default of one and we're going to give a minimum of one also. We're not going to give it a maximum, um, but what these, these min and max do is clamp it to that range so it can never go outside the range that we want. In our case, we might want a super long attack phase. We might want something, you know, 60 seconds long. We don't know yet. So we can just provide the minimum and that's what we're doing here. Um, so I've got my attack and then I'm just going to duplicate this and make a decay. And that's going to be the same default of one and a minimum of one. Just going to move my noise down a little bit so I can fit everything in. And then the final thing that we need to do is uh, when we're out here and we're thinking in musical terms, we're probably not going to be thinking about samples. Um, so we might want to use our object that we've used before, which is the 
MS to SAMPS, and that will figure out what your sample rate is and do the conversion for you. There's other ways to do this, but this is by far the simplest. So it means out here in the parent patcher, we can be thinking about things in terms of time and not necessarily worrying about sample rates. Cool. So how do we use our new parameter objects? Um, how do we control these? Whenever we make a param operator inside gen, we can now access them with like we can with all other attributes. So if I give myself a little bit more room here, we can actually create a couple of add UI objects in the same way that we, if we wanted to control attributes, plug them into our gen patcher, and then you'll see that our attack and decay params are available inside add UI. And they default to one and you can't drag them below one because of the um, the attributes that we provided. So it's, it's doing what we asked it to do. So to see that in action, uh, we might want to just have a dedicated outlet here to see the, the shape of our envelope. So let's give ourselves one more live.scope. So now we've got our outlet here dedicated to just uh, the the um, the envelope so we can slew the decay phase over 82 milliseconds and we can see that slewing down and likewise with the attack phase so let's actually hear this uh, let's hear this now we've got this plugged into our noise and so the out of this envelope is controlling this. So if we just drag this up. So I very simply turned a uh, noise source into a open and closed hat. Now I'm just using this, this envelope here um, with really not a lot of processing going on. Really, really simple. We're doing our audio generation and we're also controlling the, the envelope, the amplitude, shaping the amplitude. So before we, we leave it there, uh, the other thing that I want to show you is that the um, what, because we're using noise, one thing that you might come across is that uh, if you hook this up to a, let's say, let's use um, fab filter. So our audio is coming out of the third outlet. Um, if we use VST tilde and we plug in a message called plug and we point it towards <clears throat> fab filter pro Q double click so even though we've got a uh, a frequency distribution that's tending towards the high frequencies we've still got a, a whole bunch of low frequency information so this is really a uh, an excuse to um, anticipate something that you might run into when you're doing your gen patching and that is something uh, along the lines of when you want to sculpt some of the spectral information um, you may run into this problem where if you're used to MSP, you might be going to look for some of our, some of our friends that we use all the time in MSP when we're doing any kind of filtering and EQing, and that's, we might look for biquad, and we'll discover that we don't have a biquad to work with. And the other thing that we might do is we might look for a state variable filter like SVF, and we don't have state variable filters ready to go in here either. Then we might look for, you know, low res, um, our low pass filter, resonant low pass filter. And, you know, none of these things are going to appear for us straight out of the box. Uh, and that will be a source of frustration for many newcomers to gen. What I want to do is use this as a, as a uh, catalyst to show you how simple it is to implement some of this stuff that's not ready for you straight out of the box. And the resource that's going to be a great resource, if you don't have access to this yet, it might be worth finding a copy in uh, one manner or another, uh, which is the computer music tutorial. This is kind of the Bible for DSP and for good reason. Now, 
the stuff that I'm going to show you that's inside the uh, computer music tutorial, you can you can uh, find this in other places. It's, this is not the only source of DSP information, but I've chopped a bit out of the computer music tutorial here. This is from page 405. Um, the core of what I'm showing you here is that these, this particular method of diagramming um, uh, DSP circuits, uh, this is the common way of diagramming this. And so whenever you see a diagram like this in DSP, what I want to show you here is that you can turn this, This you're basically already looking at a gen patcher. Um, as long as you know what these nodes represent, it's very, very trivial to implement this as a gen patcher. And all you really need to know here is this glyph here. Uh, this, can, this can represent different things in different contexts, but in the context of specifically in the computer music tutorial, they make mention that this um, triangular glyph uh, indicates a delay of one sample period. Now, if you know anything about gen, um, a one sample delay is kind of the main thing that uh, launched as part of gen. It's a, it's a great um, asset to gen, being able to do one sample delays, and it's really critical to, to all kinds of DSP. So whenever you see this glyph, you can interpret that glyph as a history object. So knowing that, if we flip this, this DSP diagram 90 degrees clockwise, you're basically looking at your, your, your gen patcher. So we can plug this in here, and that's this, this parallel piece of processing here. You can probably surmise that this, uh, this uh, icon here is, is representing a multiplication operation and this one is um, indicating a uh, subtraction operation. So the value that we need to multiply here is 0 0.5. So we literally make 0 0.5. And then we need to do the same in the other parallel branch. And then we need to subtract them from each other. Now, the theory behind this is available in the commu computer music tutorial. We don't really have the time to cover that here. And in this series, we're not really going to delve into the theory of DSP. This is just a practical getting you guys started with this stuff. If you want to delve into that stuff, really encourage you to do so. The Like I said, the computer music tutorial is not the only source of that information, but it is a great guide. Um, but there's plenty of DSP theory stuff out there. Um, and th we're... Looking at our high pass filter, um, this is how simple it is to implement a, uh, a high pass filter. Uh, just a very simple Im implementation. If you want to change this to a low pass, if you flick back two pages in the computer music tutorial, you change that to a plus and you've got a low pass. But we want a high pass. So I'm going to grab this. Jump back up to our patch here. And if I paste it in, we want to put our new high pass filter here. So I'm going to highlight just these elements here, which uh, we don't really need the in or the out. And I'm going to hold command or control shift and E to encapsulate those. Give it a name, HPF, delete my in and out, and then insert it here. So if we have a look now at the um, the plot from FabFilter, um, you'll see that we're we're cutting out some we're changing the steepness of this ramp. So it's not exactly a, a cutoff that we can control in this implementation of a high pass filter. Uh, to do that is a little bit more involved, but we can have some control over this steepness. And the way that we do that is that we can stack a few of these. So if I grab another one and stack it up, you see now that the uh, the ramp is beginning from around 500 hertz. So to hear that, we can just drag this slider up. So it's a fairly weak hi-hat that we've got now because of that. So all we need to do is get rid of this second high pass filter abstraction. And then if we want to hear the difference between the, the unaffected signal, we can just drag this out. So you can hear all those low pass, uh, those low frequencies. 
so there you go. There's a method for filtering, um, controlling the amplitude shape and doing your audio signal generation all from simply just passing in a bang from a metro. You could do all this stuff inside Gen. So I hope you've uh, learned a bit from that. In future tutorials, what we're going to do is uh, the next one that's going to follow this is we're going to uh, take this method of using the click object and we're going to uh, start looking at um, ramps. We're going to make clock dividers, clock multipliers, things like that. Cool. So again, I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll see you next time.